Hi, I'm Bob German, and this video is Bot State, helping your bot remember what it's talking about. This video will explain how Bot State saves data between turns, basically between web server requests. I'll show you how to choose and configure a Bot State provider for your solution and how to use conversation and user state in your bot. So let's dive in. Recall from last time that the Azure Bot Channel Service is what connects your bot to Teams and that your bot communicates with the channel service using REST calls. Recall also that there's a thing called a turn in which the bot sends you a REST call and you can send back multiple activities or no activities, but when you finally respond to the original call, that ends the turn. Turns can go in either direction but you can only remember something really for the duration of a turn because you're running in most likelihood in a bank of stateless web servers where you can't just keep something uh, in memory and have it stay around. So bot state is going to help get around that problem of remembering things between turns. So just to clarify where we are, your bot web service, the green box, is using the Bot Builder SDK. So bot state is a feature of the Bot Builder SDK. It's a convenience for your bot. You don't need to use it, but a lot of the other bot builder concepts build on it. Bot state, there's really three different kinds of bot state. User data, conversation data, and private conversation data. User data is available in any turn and conversation where the user is present. So if users come and go from different conversations, you can still get their user data. It's a great place to store user settings and preferences. Conversation data is available in any turn in a, con in a conversation, regardless of which users are in there. The application, Microsoft Teams in our case, gets to decide when conversations begin and end, and they do tend to be fairly long-lived in Microsoft Teams. These are really useful for dialogue state, in other words, keeping track of where you are in a back and forth dialogue, and any other details about what's been said. There's a third kind of state that I'm not gonna demo today called private conversation data, which is basically user data that goes away at the end of the conversation. Now, when you're setting up bot state inside of your bot code, you can choose between different storage providers. You could put all the state in memory. You could put it in Azure Table Storage, Cosmos DB, or write your own. I'm going to show in memory, which is fine for development, but it doesn't work with more than one web server, nor does it survive restarts, so it's not really good for staging or production. So now let's take a look at an example, and I'll, um, if you want to follow along, you need to first install Node and the Bot Framework Emulator, then clone or download my repo, and then in the state bot folder, run these commands. Okay, so we're going to start here in index.js, which is the starting class for our Node uh, project. That would be startup.cs if I was in C Sharp. And, um, You'll see that uh, starting on line 10, I'm going to bring in some required modules. The bot framework adapter is kind of the main uh, main one for the SDK. This is the one that allows your bot to talk to the channel service, to the framework. Um, on line 13, we're bringing in the memory storage provider. So uh, we could have brought in one of the others, but I'm just going to run this in memory. And then line 12 and 14 have the conversation and user state management classes. So then down at the bottom of the screen on line 25, you can see I'm going to new up the memory storage, create a conversational state manager, and pass in the memory storage, and then do the same for the user state. So now let's go way down, and eventually I'm going to create the bot here on line 53, and um, pass in the user state and conversation state. So here's the bot class, and as you'll see, uh, as you would expect, uh, passing the conversation and user state into the constructor, squirreling those away, and then creating um, accessors starting on line 19 um, for these properties. So you have to have a property accessor, which is basically an object that allows you to read and write the state 
property. So um, new those up and I'm going to call one conversation data because it's just things I'm tracking about the conversation and the other user profile because it's things I want to remember about the user. Now, whenever starting on line 22, um, I'm going to get this anonymous function is going to get called every time a new message comes in from the bot service. So the first thing it does is read in the user state and the conversation data, those two uh, accessors that I set up. Notice that these are async calls in case it actually has to go out to a database somewhere to pull in this data. And um, now I can go ahead and use these variables um, and check what I'm going to do is just check to see have I asked for the user's name. And if the answer is no, um, then on line 34, I'm going to send a message that says, what is your name? Um, and I'm going to remember in the conversation data, I'm going to also remember that I've prompted the user. And I'm just going to make the assumption the very next thing the user types is their name. So the second time I come through this, right, we're just going to remember that name in the user profile and thank them for their name. Uh, now, if we already know the user's name, then we're just going to echo anything that they say. So that's my silly little scenario so that I can just demo how user and conversation state work and uh, make it a little bit more interesting. Um, on line 51, I'm going to actually pull out the uh, a a property called turn count, which is just my own property. I'm going to keep track of how many turns I've been talking to this user. And as you can see, I'll, I'll bump that up and echo it out. And then notice lines 59 and 60. This is really important. You always have to save your changes at the end. So here we are at the, at the bottom of the function that got called for the message. Um, and we're going to call wait next, which is going to end the turn, the bot turn. So um, what we want to do is save the state. It, it's kind of like the SharePoint, CSOM, or server-side API where you would make a lot of changes uh, and then sort of persist them with, with, a, uh, with one method to save all the changes that you had made. That's what we're doing here so that uh, it's going efficient, to more efficiently update the backend data store. Okay, so let's run the bot locally and test it in the bot framework emulator. I'll go ahead and bring up the local terminal and type npm start. And notice that the bot's running on port 3978. So I'll go to the bot framework emulator and open up localhost colon 3978 slash API slash messages. And the bot... Um, welcomes us, gets the conversation update, and sends a welcome message. If I say hello, as expected, it asks me for my name, and now it uh, addresses me by name from here on. So user state is working. You can see the conversation state is correctly tracking the number of turns. So now I'm going to go up to the top and pull down the little menu of restart conversation. But this time, I'm going to keep the same user ID. So Maybe this is me going back and talking to the bot later or in a different context, right, inside of Microsoft Teams. Notice that it remembers my name, right? So user state was persisted, um, and the conversation state got reset to 1. So I'm still on my first turn again. So now if I go up and restart with a new user ID, it's going to go back to asking me my name. Thanks for watching this Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices video. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Patterns and Practices YouTube channel at aka.ms slash spnp videos. I'm Bob German. You can follow me on Twitter at Bob1German, and please check out my blog at bob1german.com. That's all for this time, and thanks for watching.